Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm happy to be back here uh, this morning. It's not my first time, it's not my second. Uh, I have been here several, but maybe for those who have not, uh, we have not met, my name is Beatrice Mainge, saved by the grace of God and a worshiper at PCA Karen, a member of a District 6, member of Women's Guild, and chairman of the health board. But above all, I'm grateful to the leadership of this church for this invitation. Uh, it is not something that we take for granted uh, that they extend an invitation for me to come and share the word of God with us. And uh, like the skits have been done and the songs have been presented by the members of the Women's Guild, I'm sure by now the theme is very clear to us about seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when I saw this message, when I saw this uh, theme, I immediately uh, felt that God is giving us a message of encouragement. Because in both uh, scriptures that we have read, the righteousness of God is being repeated over and over. And also in the book of uh, Matthew, again, we are being reminded uh, not to worry about many things. And I imagine that God must have looked at the list of the things that we are worrying about today. And he felt that we must put a stop to this. Because like for us who are in this country, I believe we have a long list of things that we have to worry about. And the list is not growing shorter it is growing longer and longer every day. Uh, we just came from Corona. We have the floods. Uh, we have the doctor strike, like what you saw here being uh, presented. We have the issues of mental health. We have wrangles in the, the political leadership. And God is looking at us and saying the list is growing longer and longer. And this is why the message is coming today. Worry not. Remember that you have a father who cares. But our message today, uh, much as it is taken from the scriptures that we have read, it is saying, do not worry. Look at the birds of the air. Who clothes them? Look at King Solomon, who was not even as well adorned as the birds of the air. If the message had stopped there, then we would be comfortable. We would go home saying, we are told not to worry. So it doesn't matter what challenges we face. We would say, we have been told not to worry. But there is a spin that has been put in the Bible, where which we say that there is a spanner in the works. Because the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And that is where the rubber meets the road. Because it means that if we miss what it is that we are supposed to do as we seek the kingdom, then it means that we may miss all these other things uh, that we are looking for. And I believe all of us have different uh, desires that we have. We have children that need to finish school. We have families that need to be stable. We have our own personal health issues. We have our businesses. And all these things are our concerns. But now the Lord is saying, instead of putting all our care and our worry in all these things, we need to seek first the kingdom of God. And so our burden this morning is to ask ourselves, then what is this kingdom? And then again, what is righteousness as far as God is concerned? Because uh, those of us who are researchers, we know that even when you give common English names, you must be able to operationalize them so that they fit within the study that you are doing. So for us who are Christians, the word righteous, it may have a dictionary meaning, but when it comes to God, it has a meaning. Because like the examples that we are going to cite, we will encounter people who did things which they thought were good, but when God looked at them, like Prophet Isaiah is saying, they look like filthy rags before God. And so our burden uh, this morning is to operationalize that word, the kingdom of God on one hand, and then righteousness. And I believe we all know that the kingdom of God is not a physical place. You cannot, you cannot ask Mr. Gugu, to take you to the kingdom of God. It is not a physical place where you can go. Actually, the kingdom of God is a state of mind. 
It is a disposition. It is a habit. It is a lifestyle. It is a culture. And that is why I was enjoying the skits when they were talking about kingdom seekers. And so this morning, we want to uh, briefly look at the character of a kingdom seeker. Because that is the one that God promises to add all these other, all these other things. The kingdom seeker will be added uh, all these uh, things. So I want us to look at a few examples in the Bible of people who did things. Some were applauded. And so we can say maybe we need to copy that person. Others were frowned upon by God. And even some very uh, distasteful ta uh, terms are used to describe some people. Some are called foolish, like the foolish virgins, the foolish rich man. And so we want to flip the pages of the Bible and ask, why were they called foolish? It means that what they did was not righteous. So I want to give just a few examples. Because, like I said, our burden this morning is to find out what is righteousness and what is seeking at the kingdom of God. And that is why there is a song we used to sing a long time ago. I, I don't know whether it is still in our books. It was saying... Meaning that we must find out what is it that God wants so that we can put our focus and our efforts on what God wants. Wants. So let's look at a few examples of what righteousness is and what it is not. Our first point is when we describe the attitude and the character of a kingdom seeker, we look at our attitude towards giving. Point number one is our attitude towards giving. And we pick that from the book of Genesis 4, 1 to 18, where we encounter the story of Cain and Abel. And we are told that God asked these two brothers to bring a sacrifice. And they both went and they brought a sacrifice. But when God looked at the sacrifice that Cain had brought, he rejected that sacrifice. But he accepted the sacrifice that was brought by Abel. And so, as kingdom seekers, as we give our sacrifices to God, whether it is the service that we give, whether it is the offering that we give, whether it is even the singing that we do in church, we should be conscious of the fact that there is a possibility that our sacrifice can be rejected. And there is also a possibility that it can be accepted. And so a kingdom seeker is one who is conscious of the quality of sacrifice that he gives uh, or she gives God. Because it is not just the, the, the sacrifice, it is also the attitude. Because it is the attitude of Cain that made God uh, reject his sacrifice. And so... This story of Cain and Abel, it highlights the importance of sincere devotion and worship, while it also illustrates the mercy of God. So when we are singing, when we are doing the ushering, when we are doing the, you know, whatever type of worship that we are doing to God, a kingdom seeker will ask themselves, is this sacrifice worth the God that I'm giving? Is this singing, when the leader of service says, Clap for yourselves, you have sung well. A kingdom seeker will ask, will ask, did I contribute to that quality of music? Did I sing well? And so that is one of the things uh, that we, uh, we, we, we are finding out. And that is why in the book of Malachi 1, verse 8 to 11, God says that sometimes we offer animals that are blind and others that are lame. And he, he challenges us and says, Try and offer that to your governor and see whether you will be accepted. So we are saying that as we give our sacrifices to God, we need to look at the quality. Even the time that we give to God, are we giving him quality time so that we, are, we know that our sacrifice will be accepted? And I believe that that is why David, when he was offered a free uh, piece of land to build the altar for God, he said, how can I give God that which has cost me nothing? Because he understood that giving offerings to God is a form of sacrifice. Even Joseph of Arima there, after Jesus had been crucified, he watched from a distance. And then he told them, now that you have done what you wanted to do, 
you have killed him. Can you at least give me his body? So he ensured that though the death of Jesus was shameful, at least his burial was of honor, and he bought a tomb for Jesus. So we are talking about our attitude towards giving, and that is one of the things that a kingdom seeker uh, should have. Because we are saying, we don't want to just go home and say, saying, we were told not to worry. We must also go home saying, we were also told what to do, so that all these other things can be added unto us. Bwana Yesu wasifiwe. Are we in church this, morning, this afternoon? Number two, contentment. We are looking at the character of a kingdom seeker. Contentment. Are you a person who is contented? And we are not talking about complacency. We are not talking about not desiring, uh, the, you know, self-improvement. We are talking about when God blesses you, do you take time to at least say thank you that at least we have finished building this house. We have, my child has finished school. We went to church to pray that they may go to school and finish. But do we take time to tell God at least thank you? And we look at the, the story that is told in the book of Luke 12, uh, 13 to 21. The story of the rich fool. We are told that this man, when he finished doing his harvesting, he looked around and said, I am going to increase my, my granaries because it is time to eat, drink, and make merry. Do we hear him mentioning God anywhere? Saying thank you God for this bumper harvest. No, he was, you know, praising himself and saying, I'm going to increase my granaries. But God said, you foolish man, you are rich, but foolish because you are not remembering to acknowledge the one who has enabled you uh, to do this. And so we are talking about contentment. And God is reminding us that sometimes he blesses us and we receive the blessing and continue scanning the environment for what is coming next. You know, we are holding the blessing, but we are still looking around for the next, the next, the next. That we have finished building the house in Kawaskari. Can you take the excavators to Kawa farmers? Can you take the excavators to Kawa? Which is the other Kawa? Kawa? Kawa station. Kawa station. Yeah, so we have finished building Kawa stations. Let's take the, the excavators to Kawa Wendani. Do, do we take time to even thank God for that first project? That is what God is saying. The character of a kingdom seeker is one who takes time to say, Thank you, Father for what you have done. Thank you for this far. Thank you for this child who has finished school. It is not because of what I have done, but it is just by your, by your grace. So contentment is a character of a kingdom seeker. And point number three, a kingdom seeker or kingdom seekers have order. Order in God's service. And you have a story in the, in the book of Matthew 25, Verse 1 to 13, the story of the foolish virgins, the five foolish virgins who went for a banquet that was an overnight banquet and their lamps were half empty. They were not focused on what they were going to do. They knew that the banquet was going to take the whole night, but they passed total, they passed rubies, they passed ola with empty, empty lamps. And the Bible says that by the time the bridegroom was coming, they had gone to the market to look for oil for their lamp, and they missed a great visitation. So we are saying that kingdom seekers, those who are seeking the kingdom of God, must have order. We must be orderly, even in the service that we give. And I imagine how uh, these virgins miss a great visitation. Because I want to believe that the bridegroom did not come alone. He must come with other young men who are also coming to scan around and see the virgins around. And they must have been booking the, the you know, the girls and saying, Kale kakona tu, tu migu, kale kakona tu dimpos. But you see, if there must have been other virgins who are more beautiful, but they were outside. Praise the name of the Lord. They were locked outside, so they missed a great visitation. And so God is reminding us that he wants kingdom seekers to be people who have order, even in the service that we give. Because we are like our God. Our God is a God of order. He did not wake up one day and ask, what is it that I'm going to create today? 
The Bible records how orderly the work of creation was done. Day one, day two, day three, up to day six, the work was executed. And he was orderly enough to remember that he needed self-care. So he said, today I'm doing nothing. It is a day of rest. And that is how God wants us to be. And that's why I keep saying that uh, when people call us the church of Mutaratara, you know, they, they, they use it as a, you know, as a, a derogatory term. But little do they know how proud we are of being people of order. Because that is how our God is. So when someone asks me, why we work with Mutaratara? I'm going to be, eh, Mutaratara. Because even our God is a God of order. When you look at uh, the time when Jesus died, he had promised his disciples that he was going to send them the Holy Spirit. But when he left, they all went to their own things. Some of them even went back to doing the things that they were doing before. And the Holy Spirit did not come at all that time because some were fishing, others were doing many things. But we are told that on the day of Pentecost, when they came together in order and in one accord, seated, having left everything else that they were doing to just come and seek the kingdom of God, then they had a sound like a wind. And the Holy Spirit came down because there was order. The Holy Spirit only visits places that are orderly. And that is why God says that where there is unity, God commands a blessing. And that is how God wants us to be. This is what these scriptures, these scriptures are reminding us today. And to prove what God is saying in the book of Matthew, that all these other things will be added unto us. Look at a person like Peter. When Jesus was being crucified, he denied him. A young girl came and said, this man was with him. And he said, who? Gee, what? I have never heard that name. I do not know him. But when the spirit of God came down, when he left the fishing and came back to church and they were in one accord, what was added to them? Courage. And they preached with such courage that actually 3,000 people uh, came to God on that day. So we are saying kingdom seekers are orderly people. When we say seek ye first, the kingdom of God is about bringing order to the house of God. Point number four. The other character of a kingdom seeker is coming back to our senses. And that is why I started by saying that this is a message of encouragement. That we are worrying about so many things. But like the prodigal son who was worried about his condition, he remembered that he had a father. In the book of Luke 15, 11 to 13, where we encounter the story of the prodigal son. The son realized, yes, it is true that I have sinned before my father. It is true that I took my inheritance. It is true that I have wasted all this money. But you know what? I have a, I have a father. And I will go back to him. And the Bible says that he came back to his senses. And that is what God is reminding us this morning. As we seek the kingdom of God, he's saying, come back to your senses. All these things that you're worrying about, you remember that you have a father. Come back to me. I will restore you. And all these things that you're worrying about will be added unto you. So this man came back to his father and he was restored. So God wants to restore us back to our original state. He wants to restore the relationship uh, that we had with him. And the hands of Jesus are still outstretched. He's still saying, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Even in the midst of the taxes, the midst of the floods and all these, the hands of Jesus are still saying, come, I will give you rest. And that is why this message is coming to us, that we seek the kingdom of God. Are we learning the character of a kingdom seeker? Yes, number five, God wants a kingdom seeker to have a personal relationship with him. Personal relationship, as found in the book of Matthew 16, verse 13 to 19. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they say, some say you are Jeremiah, others you are John the Baptist. They gave all manner of answers. But then Jesus looked at them straight in the eye. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Because it is not what other people are saying. It is not the testimony of other people. Do you have a testimony about your personal relationship with God? That is what God wants. 
that even as we do his work as a corporate body, even as we do the offerings, even as we, we sing these choruses, he is listening to your voice. He is looking at your personal offering. He wants to have a personal relationship with him. And I like talking about my experience at the National Youth Service. And in the National Youth Service, we used to march in big groups, more than 7,000 people, where they brought all the universities together. And when we were so many at the parade, some people would just march uh, carelessly. And if you were spotted by their fundy, then he would stop the whole parade. And then he would make a beeline to where you were. And then he would say, the whole parade stand easy because there is work to do here. And he would order this person who is messing the parade. He would say, Sasa, wewe pekeako, forward march. So he would bring you forward. And then they would, he would, you'd be given, you know, many orders. Right turn, left turn, full salute, about turn. And then he would see the mess that you are doing. And he would tell you, on your doubles, lenga to the kitchen. Wende ukachonge viazi. Na unaitwa majina zingine mingi hapo. But so we are saying, if God was to come to our church today, as you are singing, and then he says, the whole church, stop. Aseme, wewe, peke yako. And then he asks you, sing how you are singing. Would you be among the people who are contributing to the beautiful singing? When we are building the church of God, and we are saying, we have finished this, this project, and God says, wewe, peke yako, kuja, let me see your contribution. The things that we do in church, that the church is clean. People have been ushered in, and he says, wewe peke yako. Let me see your contribution. God wants to have a personal relationship with us. And that's why we are saying that even as we do the work that we do for, for God, we must remember that he is watching. He is watching me as Beatrice, even as we build the church that we are building uh, back home in Karen. He is looking, what are you contributing? What are you doing? How are you relating with me uh, personally? Number six, using our gifts to serve God. This is another character of a kingdom seeker, using our gifts to serve God. As we see in the book of Matthew 25, 14 to 19, where we encounter the story of the talents. And we are shown three people who were given talents. Two of them were able to invest. The one who was given five, the one who was given two, they were able to invest their talent. But one of them decided to be clever and he hid his talent uh, in the ground. And when the master came, the ones who had invested and multiplied, they were gifted, they were rewarded. But the one who had hidden his talent, he was punished and even that talent was taken away from him. So God is saying, all of us have been given gifts. There is no one who does not have uh, something to offer in church. And God wants to see how we are utilizing uh, those gifts. Because when we don't utilize these gifts and the master comes back, he will want to see what we have done with what he gave us. And if you do not know what your gifting is, you are free to ask your friends. You are free to ask your family. What do you think I'm good at? There are those who, when they're in the shower, they sing and you, you wonder, why are they not even releasing these songs? Because they sing so well. And they will sit and criticize the choir. Your song, Ingekuwa Mzuri, but kino anavuruta. You can't even pick the voices. And the Lord is saying, Come and make the choir better. Because he wants us to use the gifts that he has given us. Maybe you don't have any other gift apart from a natural smile and a calm demeanor. And you can use that to usher people into the church. Because you need to have a natural smile to be an, an usher. Si mnajua ushering haitakangi sura ya kazi. Sindio? Ya kuwabia watu, keti pale, songa wewe, you know? And maybe you even have an umbrella unaambia watu, wewe songa, songa hivi. You know, ushering. Inataka calm. People who are calm and they have a natural smile. It's a gift. And maybe you are not using that gift. God is saying he wants kingdom seekers to exploit this gift so that when he comes back, he will reward them. And sometimes I think about the gift of singing. A very powerful gift. Ask the people in the Old Testament, the Israelites, how they fought some of their battles how they brought the wall of Jericho down. 
just by singing and playing the instruments and going around the wall. And it came down. Ask them how they even fought some of the enemies. God told them, don't pick any weapon. Just go and sing and play, and play musical instruments. And the enemies started fighting each other. Singing is a weapon of war. It was used as a weapon of war. Ask Paul and Silas how their chains broke. They didn't fight the soldiers. They just sang and their chains broke. These are very powerful weapons that God has given us. And we can use it well even to have these other things added unto us. It is a living sacrifice. And that is why the children of Israel, when they were in Babylon, and the people of Babylon told them, sing to us the songs that you used to sing to, to your gods. And they looked at them and wondered, these people, don't they know our God? Our songs are not just songs. Sio miondoko, sio dumo, sio, you know, it's their sacrifice of praise. And they sang to them, Kai mo toe gai wito. Kai mo toe uriatarie. Nimbo sha gai wito. Nigongo na ere moyo. Tota atia komo inera tuigo po. Kai mo toe gai wito. Nyeboshia gai wito ni gogo na reke. Tinye boshia goitaga. And so those who have the gift of singing, I wish you knew the kind of contribution that you make in church. Because the Bible says that God dwells in the praises of his people. You are enough to bring the spirit of God into this church. And so we are saying that it is good to identify the gifts that God has given us so that we use them. And kingdom seekers also remember to submit to the giver of these gifts. Because even as we enjoy the giftings that God has given us, we must remember that Jesus has the purest form of these gifts. He has the purest forms of this gift. And why am I saying this? You may be a doctor, and when you need to, co to conduct surgery, you must take someone to theater, you must put an anesthesia and do all those things. But there is one who healed people without touching them. He would just say, pick up your mat and walk. He would just say, your faith has made you whole. He didn't need to do all those things. And that is why the Bible calls him the great physician. And so even as doctors, we need to submit to this great physician because he has the purest form of that gift that he has given us. You may be a psychologist like me. And when you look at the, the work of Jesus, Sometimes psychologists and even psychiatrists, sometimes we even miss a diagnosis. You treat someone for depression only to realize that Kumbe, he has bipolar. And that is why when you look at our notes, we say depression, but we query bipolar so that we continue observing. But Jesus looked at a widow who was going to bury her only son. He just looked at that situation and immediately he was able to make a diagnosis. And he said, this is a, a, a case of trauma that is forming right before my eyes. This is a case of loss and grief that is forming right before my eyes. This is a case of, you know, PTSD that is forming right before my eyes. And so he said that before we get there, he raised the boy and gave it to his mother. And everything uh, was solved at once. Jesus knew how to diagnose some of these uh, conditions, and he acted immediately. No wonder prophet Isaiah called him the wonderful counselor. That he was not just good, but wonderful. Even when he treated people, even when he healed people, he did not do like some of us do. Uh, you know, doctors, sometimes you go to a doctor's office, and as you are explaining what is happening to you, he's already giving you a paper and telling you, go to the lab. You, you know, you are like, I have not told you everything. He says, I know what it is, go to the lab. But Jesus would give people uh, an opportunity to speak about their problems. He would ask them, what do you want me to do for you? So that they, they could feel hard. That at least this doctor has had my problem. He is the wonderful counselor, the great physician. You may be a teacher. 
And I know in this, in this uh, place we have many teachers because we have many universities around. But look at Jesus. He taught with a lot of simplicity. Actually, every time Jesus stood up to teach, people would say, gosh, we have never had anyone teach like this. In fact, some people even stopped calling Jesus by his name. Jesus just called him Rabbi because he taught with simplicity. When he needed to use parables, he did. When he needed to explain things plainly, he did. He knew different methods uh, to teach. And so, as kingdom seekers, we need to submit to this giver of these gifts. Serve him with humility, knowing that we need his guidance, we need his wisdom to be able to execute. Because he has the greatest, he has the purest form of some of these uh, gifts uh, that we have. And as we finish, the other character of a kingdom seeker is one who looks for fellowship with God. It is one who creates time to be in God's house doing God's work. And God wants us sometimes to forget the many things that we are doing out there and just come to his house and have fellowship with other believers. And we saw the example that we gave uh, before in the book of Acts chapter 2, that when the disciples were scattered everywhere, nothing was happening. Some of them looked like they had even backslid. Peter had even denied Jesus, and so he was not sure whether he was still a disciple of Jesus. But we are told on the day of Pentecost, they came back. They came back to the, to the synagogue, and they sat together in fellowship, not competing, not fighting, not having wrangles, but together in one accord. And that is when the Spirit of God came down. So do we want the Spirit of God to come to this church? It is by having one accord. It is by having fellowship. It is by having, you know, using our gifts uh, to serve God so that he can add all these things. He knows that we have all these uh, worries. He knows that we have children that need to finish school. He knows that we have marriages that are struggling. He knows that we have businesses that are struggling. He knows all these things. But he's saying, it is not that you stop, you know, caring. He's saying, don't worry too much. Serve God. Let those blessings and breakthroughs find you when you're serving God. And I believe that is why the PCMF, they sing, when he calls me, I will answer. I will be somewhere working for my God. So these blessings that we are praying for, these healings that we are praying for, let them find us serving. Let them find us somewhere working for God. Because that is what the scripture is telling us today. That seek ye first the kingdom of God. But God is reminding us today as we conclude that we have, sometimes we have our priorities upside down. That we are looking for all other things so that then we come and seek the kingdom. So this message today, uh, the theme of the woman's guilt, is reminding us that we need to rearrange our priorities. We serve God first. And all other things will be added unto us. And we have seen that when Peter, when the Spirit of God came down, they were added courage. They were added charisma. The same man who had denied Jesus, he was able to preach with so much courage, and he didn't fear whether they were going to kill him. They said, he, this Jesus that you crucified, and 3,000 people came to him desperately and saying, what shall we do? And he said, repent and be baptized. 3,000 people uh, were baptized that day. The same Peter who had denied Jesus. So what it means is that even the courage that we are looking for, even to bring up our families, even to work in the places of work where God has blessed us, even to move uh, this country from one point to another, the courage that ch the church needs, even to say no to the government of the day when things are not going the way they should, it is by serving God seeking the kingdom. He will give us the courage like he gave uh, to the disciples. And they started doing exploits for God. Some of them even lost their lives, but they didn't care. I'm not saying that we lose our lives, but I'm saying let us serve God. Let us serve God with the gifts that he has given us. And all these other things shall be added unto us. We shall do exploits for God. It is right to give God priority in our lives. And the peace that we seek, the prosperity that we seek, the courage, the health, the stability of our families that we are seeking will be added unto us. And it is my prayer this morning that just like the prodigal son came to his senses after he had messed up his life, 
he had wronged his father and he didn't think that he was going to be forgiven. He was ready even to become a servant in, the, in, the house, in his father's house. But he said, after all, he is my father. And that is what God wants us to remember. That in the midst of all the struggles, let us remember that we have a father. Let us come back to our senses and come, come back to him and tell him, God, we are going to serve you. The blessings that we are working, we, we want, it will find us as we serve, like the theme of the PCMF. We will be somewhere working for God. And I believe that all these things that we seek will find us as we serve him and as we seek his kingdom and his righteousness. Do we now know the character of a kingdom seeker? May you go forth and become kingdom seekers. And all these other things will be added unto you. In Jesus' name.